Okay, so let's take a look at the Pegasus World Cup Turf Invitational. It's the 12th race on the card at Gulfstream, and it's running a mile and an eighth on the turf for four-year-olds and up. And we've got a full field for this one, as you can see. Uh, we've got a lot of familiar faces, um, Atone, Jerry the Nipper, uh, Adamo, Masterpiece, uh, Cheryl Spite. Uh, these are ones that we've seen, uh, I, a lot of them we saw in last year's Pegasus Turf, and uh, they've been on the uh, in and around uh, the uh, the graded stakes divisions for quite some time. Uh, some of the lesser known are Jerry the Nipper, uh, Integration, a new uh, new player on the scene. Pretty excited to see him run, and uh, and of course Warmheart, the uh, the British Invader, um, who looks uh, pretty stout here. Uh, so we'll take a look at the field and seeing how we're going to play it. Um, main event's the Lone Speed in here, and he's coming off a, uh, a nice race last time at Gulfstream, and he was uh, very keen and uh, or very dogged in the stretch, and uh, I thought uh, ran a really solid race. Uh, I think he's coming into this race in good form, seems to be peaking at the right time. Uh, he's going to have a tall order. Uh, to hold off warm heart, but uh, I think he's running a, uh, you know, he went, he was uncontested last time, and he's probably going to be uh, again here, and uh, I don't see anybody who's going to be real keen to get on the lead with the, the maybe exception of a tone, but uh, I think main event, uh, you know, we'll try to wire this field, obviously, and uh, uh, I think it's probably going to be a, a, a tall order, as I said, but a lot of things can happen in racing. And the main thing is he's in good form, and so I think he's one we have to include. Uh, Atone uh, really hasn't run a good race since the Pegasus Turf last year, which he won. And you just have to wonder if Father Time is maybe catching up with him. Um, I can't like him in this spot. I just don't see enough to tell me that he's going to rebound, so he's a toss. Uh, Jerry the Nipper is, um, you, you have to love a horse who's consistent as he is, 17 out of 20 times in the money. Problem is, he's always the bridesmaid. Uh, the last race, he got shuffled back a bit, but he re-rallied well uh, to get back into the money. But uh, I'm not sure about the top end here. I, I think he is in good form, but uh, he's going to be playing for second like most everybody else in here. So I, for filling out the exotics, I think he's a use for sure. Uh, Catnip is, um, you know, he's he's running outside of Monmouth, and that seems to be uh, last year in the summer, you know, he was in a really good spot, and uh, he ran his best races. He had three in a row, very solid efforts, but outside of Monmouth, he really doesn't do a whole lot of running, uh, particularly at the graded stakes level, so um I'm probably not going to use, if you want to throw him on the bottom of your tickets, you will get a price. Uh, it's Michael Stidham, and he is coming off a layoff. I could kind of go either way with him for underneath, but uh, that's the extent of my interest. Integration looks pretty darn good. Uh, if anybody is going to upset the apple cart, I think it's him. Uh, he's trained by Shug McGahey. He's progressing beautifully. Uh, the last race, he just blew that field away like they were sitting still, and... Uh, I just think that this one's got a ton of potential, and he's in the right hands with Shug McGahee. So integration, I like a lot in this spot. I'm very busy. Was coming out of that same race and was no match for integration whatsoever. Didn't run badly, but uh, you also have to note, and it's um, it's really an anomaly at this point. But Chad Brown is 0 for 26 at Gulfstream. I don't know what's going on with his barn, but. Uh, that is highly unusual, to say the least. He's got three runners in here. None of them I expect to factor in this race, and it really doesn't have too much to do with the fact that his barn's going poorly. It's just they're not good enough. And I'm very busy, probably the top of the Chad Brown class here, but that's not saying much in this race. King Max ran a really good second behind main event. Last time he was stout in the stretch, was running off his left lead, and uh, you have to wonder if maybe... That cost him as he didn't get that little extra burst horses get when they change leads. But I think he's coming into this race in good form. Uh, Adamo Racing is 
or Amo Racing rather, is a, a, an outfit that's pretty ambitious. They're pretty aggressive, and uh, they do a lot of running in Europe. And uh, this one, uh, I think, is uh, going to run a good race. He looks to be uh, coming in, uh, coming off his top uh, top speed figure, and uh, he looks like he's uh, one that's ready to move forward. So King Max, I think, one you can consider in here. Uh, Adamo's never been a fan. I've never been a fan of this horse ever. And he just isn't very good, and he's not good enough here, and he's an immediate toss. Uh, Warm Heart is the obvious chalk in this race, and uh, to me, he's the horse to beat, and I don't think there's anybody in here who can. Uh, losing to Inspiral in the Breeders' Cup is no disgrace whatsoever. Ran a really solid second, and uh, I think uh, Warm Heart will be, uh, will be very uh, stout in here, and it's going to be awful hard to beat. He is the pick. Uh, Grand Sonata is also eligible. Uh, the last race was the last chance I'm giving this horse. He isn't good enough. He's just an underachiever. And uh, I think this is the kind of race that if he does draw in, they usually fall very flat. So he's a toss. Anglophile is also an also eligible. And Brian Lynch trades him. He's just on fire at Gulfstream right now. Uh, he clicks with 43% with Johnny Velasquez. This one isn't fast enough. Uh, that's the bottom line. But he is coming to the race in good form. Uh, came off the layoff at four years old and ran a really good race. Uh, got a little bit of traffic issues, but uh, closed very well. And I expect to move forward here. I don't know that it's uh, good enough necessarily, but I think you can get him underneath at a price. So if he does draw in, that would be the extent of my investment is using him underneath. But I think he's worth a shot. Uh, from the closes, Web Slinger has yet to run against older horses, which is a bit of a surprise to me. Uh, his last race, he was very game. Uh, he's a deep runner. He's, at times, been very effective. Uh, other times, not so much. Uh, this is a big jump into a, a grade one of against older horses, but uh, I think with the uh, coming off the bench uh, with a little growth spurt, he could very well uh, be a factor in here, but again, play him for second. Masterpiece is eight years old, and I just, this horse just, I don't know. His last race was a good one. He won, but he's not good enough, I don't think. Uh, he perennially disappoints, and uh, now he's got Sidney Dutrow, I guess, uh, Dick Dutrow's kid or, or whoever it is, but uh, I, I, I just can't see it. So, Masterpiece to toss. Cheryl Spite is over two at a mile and an eighth, and I like this horse. Uh, he always comes uh, stateside and performs very well, but uh, I'm just wondering if uh, maybe Father Time a little bit is catching up with him, and also the distance. I don't think it's ideal for him. Uh, you're probably going to get a shorter price than you'd like, uh, but if you want to use him, I wouldn't blame you, but I'm going to look for better value, so I'm going to toss. So if we look at our wagering strategy, uh, to me, Warm Heart is the one to beat. So we have to play accordingly. Uh, I would go with a cold exacta 9-3. I think if any horse is going to beat him, it's integration. Uh, so, but likely playing for second. So I would just bet a cold exacta 9-3 and uh, go for it. And then back it up with a, with a key with 9 on top. And then 2, 3, 5, 6, and 11. The logic being, of course... If we get 9-3, then we double up and then box the two of them just in the outside chance that uh, integration pulls it off. So you've got th uh, uh, you've got a bit of a saver. And if Warm Heart does what I think he will, then you hit three times. So we'll go th with that. The trifecta, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go 9 with 3 with 2, 5, 6, 11 and Anglophile if he draws in. Um, and again, we're, we're playing that... Uh, Integration, to me, is the best hope for second place. Um, and then we'll back it up with 9, with 2, 5, 6, 11, uh, and 14, if, if Anglophile draws in, with the 3. Because I think it's a really good bet that integration is going to be in the money. It's just a question of whether it's second or third. So uh, which, because this is a chalky race, the, the, you know, it, the value might be uh, in the sequence betting. Because obviously, Warm Heart's going to be an awful short price. But if we want to attack it, you can always get, uh, you can get some decent value uh, if you get a horse at a price who comes in behind or you leverage heavy 
with uh, another short price. And that's what I think might be a little more logical to do here. But uh, again, warm hearts race to lose. And uh, it'd be pretty exciting to see him run again.